Please take your Bibles and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and look with me in verse 12. The Bible said, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation. Now, we went over those two things last time we met, the last Wednesday. But now we're going to look at the issues of in charity, in spirit, in faith, and purity. So when we look at this address, we know that the Lord is addressing Timothy. He's a young pastor of a church. And uh, God is uh, moving the Apostle Paul to pen these inspired words so that Timothy understands exactly what he needs to do. The charge is here is that you be an example. And the world needs good, godly examples. Today we look at the issue and we'll begin with the word charity, in charity. This word charity is a noun, but in the general sense it means love or benevolence or goodwill. The disposition of the heart which inclines men to think favorably of their fellow man. That's very important. So when we look at the issue of charity, uh, you can go with me to John chapter 13, verse 34, please. John 13, 34. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament. Verse uh, chapter 13. Verse 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. So in 1 John chapter 3 the Bible says, For this is the message that you have heard from uh, him heard from the beginning that we should love one another. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible says, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and will love one another as he gave us commandment. See, we're all to be loving uh, toward each other. And the, the, the command is to Timothy that you need to be an example in the issue of, of charity. So, let me give you an illustration. A friend of mine, my dad's, my dad's friend, uh, Brother Hernan Cortez, was a church planter in Puerto Rico probably for 50 years. And it's a unique story how I, 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 my wife and I came in contact with Brother Hernan. It was just a, really a miracle of God what happened. But we had a chance that when he came from Puerto Rico, he came to visit his sister, which we were very good friends with. And... Uh, had a chance to visit with Brother Hernan Cortez, and he told us a very unique story about love. He said, uh, there is a, at our church, he said, across the street, there was a, a, a house, and it was uh, occupied by a woman that was a witch. She was a witch doctor. And he said, uh, we knew she was there, but one day she sent me a note saying, I want to talk to you. So could you imagine getting a doctor, a, wit, a note from a witch doctor saying, I want to talk to you, and I, who, who knows what that would be about, right? So he said he just went over there, and uh, she said to him, said, uh, I, I watch your church people every Sunday, how they interact with one another outside, and they hug each other, and they, they're talking to each other, and they're all happy. She said, uh, that really interests me. And you know, Brother Hernan Cortez took the Bible and told her and taught her about the love of Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ loved her and that witch bowed her head and asked Jesus Christ to be her personal Savior. See, there's a, but when you look at the issue of exercising charity, there's a few hindrances that we want to mention in dealing with people of any sort. Now, it's whether you're in fellowship you fellowship with people, or you're in leadership, or just uh, in observation. See, when you get away from a scriptural-based relationship, with one of the parties, or all the parties involved, get away from the Bible. You're going to face times that are really, you're confronted with very strange problems. You could be confronted with very, very difficult words or actions that are said among one another when you get away from the Bible. And certainly perplexing behavior. You really see that manifested at work because work is a situation where 
you know, hey, there's the, the only common denominator that you basically have is what you're employed to do. But you can face a lot of problems, and that root of bitterness, if you're not careful, can take hold of your life. See, there are even times when there can be unscriptural hostilities that, that brood up in your life. And, and Christians fighting among one another just is, not, is something that cannot be tolerated. And I love what Charles Haddon Spurgeon said. He said, fighting sheep are strange animals. And fighting Christians are self-evident contradictions. See, sheep don't have fangs, and sheep don't growl, and sheep don't raise their, raise their lip up to show you their, their fangs, right? Sheep don't howl. So for, a, a, for a fighting Christians, like he said, is a self-evident contradiction. Look with me in the book of Galatians. Um, Galatians chapter 5, please. And I want to invite you to verse 14. So the Bible said in verse 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye abide and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. One of the major hindrances to, to really exercising charity in the Christian life is battling the issue of becoming cynical. Now, cynical really doesn't have, it, it can happen in, when you're fellowship with people. It certainly can happen in areas of leadership, but it really also can happen and it can be very prevalent in your life in the issue of just observing what is going on in, in, in society. So let me give you the definition of the word cynical. It means believing or showing the belief that people are motivated chiefly by base selfish concerns, skeptical of the motives of others. You, you and I, all of us, can be very, very cynical. The, the 1828 dictionary has a different, different definition about being cynical, and we need not to brag about being cynical because the definition means having qualities of a surly dog, snarling, uh, a surly, curlish, or austere, a man of a canine temper. That, that's, not a, that's not a good testimony, right? So as a child of God, we're to love one another, and we don't have any excuse on the way out. We have no excuse because we have the word of God that tells us otherwise. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9, the Bible said, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Hold on. What that means is you really don't have an excuse. If you're saved, the Holy Spirit of God and the word of God is going to teach you how you ought to be loving toward one another. Yeah. Yeah. So look back with me in our text of verse. Verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit. So the word spirit here gives the thought of being primarily the wind or the air or hence uh, breath, the spirit. In, in, in my spirit, so if I, I have my, the spiritual aspect of my life, but also we, we use the word spirit like I have a lot, I, I, we equate it to zeal. I have a lot of zeal, you know, charging it. So the Christian and the preacher both certainly should have a lot of spirit when it comes to the zeal for the work of the ministry. But we also need to be an example of what we should be spiritually. See, the Bible said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is what? It's death. See, the Bible said in Romans 8, 14, for as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible said, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, 
serving the Lord. So we look at the spiritual aspect of our lives needs to be where it needs to be. Then the, 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 the zeal that we need to have in our lives for what we're trying to do, either for the cause of Christ or anything that we put our hands to do, we ought to do it with all our might. The, so the next thing it says, in spirit, in faith. I'm going to give you a quote of Dr. Harold Davison. If you've never heard it or certainly maybe you've not written it down, I think it's very amazing. He was a 92-year-old preacher friend of ours, and thank God he had an opportunity to be able to come here to preach uh, the year before he passed away. And what a man full of wisdom. Brother Harold Davidson said, Biblical faith is believing God's word to the extent that you act accordingly. Biblical faith is believing God's word to the extent that you act accordingly. See, also, we, we look at the issue of faith. You know, hope is interlinked with faith because hope is at heaven and expected in. When I say I have faith in God, I also have hope in God. But as I have faith in God, I trust God's going to do what he said he's going to do. I trust that God, God is always going to take care of his people. Always. God is, God is always going to bless and help his people and certainly those that are blessable. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I mean, I mean 2 Timothy chapter 1, look over there real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 1, look at with me in verse 12. So the Bible said in verse 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You know what? That's having faith in God. He had faith in God. Okay, I've, I've, I've committed my life to the Lord. I've, I'm, I'm saved, and I believe that he's going to come through with, with what he said he's going to do. In Romans chapter 1, please. Romans 1, 17. Look at me in verse 17 and 18. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith that is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And then the, then, then the chapter goes on. But right at the end of verse 17, the just shall live by faith. Listen to Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. The Bible said, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident the just shall live by faith. The law does not save you. The law didn't save you then. The law's pointing to, to the Lord is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 37 says, for yet a little while and he shall come and, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Lord, let it be today. What a wonderful day it would be if he would. Now, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So when we look at people in the Bible that are great examples to us, there's three that really stand out. Abraham and Joseph and Daniel. Abraham, Joseph, and Daniel are great examples among other ones. But the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, by faith Abraham... When he was called out, uh, called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, watch this, and he went out not knowing whether he went. God told him, I want you to leave your father's house. You go to the land I tell you. You go where I tell you. I'm going to take care of you. And he just went. He didn't even know where he was going. And you know what that is? That is total dependence upon the Lord, and that is great admirable faith. The Bible teaches that Joseph was able to walk with God Joseph walked with God before he was abused by his brothers. His brothers beat him up, threw him in a pit, and sold him into slavery. And you know the story. He winds, he winds up in the prison, and then he winds up in the palace. But when it's all said and done, and the, the, the tables start, start to turn, and God prophetically had told Joseph what God was going to do in his life, though nobody, nobody understood it. When his brothers came... And, and they're, they're begging for, for corn because of, of the famine. Joseph was the second most powerful man on the face of the earth. 
but yet he was able to tell his brothers that were terrified that he was going to kill them when their dad died. This is what he said. But as for you, God thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass or bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to say. Joseph had such faith that when he went through all of that hardship, instead of being cynical, instead of har harboring bitterness, instead of taking retribution on somebody, he was able by faith to look back and see what God had done through all those circumstances and give praise to the Lord. And you know what the Bible said? And he spake kindly to them. You know what that is? That's an exercise of faith, but that's also exercising biblical charity. See, Daniel is a man of great faith, and he's a great encouragement to us. The Bible said in Daniel 6, 3, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because he had an excellent spirit was in him, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So then what happened is these princes, get, they, they, they got all jealous. And, and what happened was a government law was passed that, that restricted him from pass, uh, praying uh, even in the privacy of his home. And what did he do? Did he say, well, they, they passed the law, you know. I, I, no, laws have to be legal. A law, laws, laws, we, that's why we have a legislature. You know, you, 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 have, you put those guys in office, allegedly, to vote of what the constituents in the Constitution say. But they're bound by written law. We're in a republic. We're not in a mobocracy. Uh, the, the, the repu a republic, a true republic, a republic, if, if it can stand, is where the people and the leaders are all bound by written law. It's written law based on God's word, but it's written law that has stood the test of time. But what happened was when, when people start making dictatorial law, uh, what they call laws, but they're, they're not statutory or they're not legally made, they're not legal laws, especially when they tell you to violate the scripture. Oh, hold on a minute, man. I'm not violating scripture. I'm sticking with the word of God. I don't care what you say it is. If it violates the word of God, I'm not doing it. It doesn't matter. You say, well, that, that's being disobedient. And, and that's being a rebel. You can call it what you want to. That's what the disciples did. They were told not to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. And they went and preached in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, Daniel was told, you're not to pray. And what did he do? He got on his knees and he prayed three times a day. The Bible, the Bible is very clear in, Rome, in uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when David, when Daniel, forgive me for stuttering. I've been up since 2.30 this morning. My mind ain't clicking too good. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. They lock him up. They throw him in the den of lions. Not a lion's den, a den of lions. So it's full of lions. But did, 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 did that deter Daniel from obeying God? No, he obeyed God because, listen, he trusted God, and look what God did. God stepped in, and even a, even a king, King Darius, come and said, Hey, God saved you. He gave God the glory. Now, in our text verse, back over in first, uh, if you would look with me, please, in First Timothy chapter uh, 4, in verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He was to be an example in purity, and so should we. He was to live a moral and clean life, and so should we. He, he, was, he, he was a man that was to live an honest life, and so should we. We could talk about moral purity, and certainly today is a day to where it would do good for churches to obey the Bible, and if someone... It, just stick to the word of God and live by the word of God. But I want to give you a different, di different thought about what, what he needed to be honest about. Pure, pure. What he need, what, how he needed to live a, a pure life. Let me give this to you. He needed to be a, a pure in his calling. He, he needed to make sure that his calling, he was called of God. He, he needed to make sure that he was careful with his time. And let's read the next verses. 
Look at verse 11 and 12. I mean, I'm sorry, verse 13 and 14. Tell her, come give attendance to reading the exhortation to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is, uh, that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the lying on of hands of the presbytery. So we need to be very careful and honest with his time. The Bible said, till I come, give attendance to reading. You know, reading and studying takes time. But reading and studying is not only something that's good for the preacher. It, it is imperative for all of our lives, right? So we, we look at uh, some people say, well, you know, that, what that means is uh, re reading people. No, it means reading the scripture and, and or reading people. If you want to read it, read that into it. But see, one man made this statement. We are quite persuaded that the very best way for you to be spending your time, your leisure time, now this is to preachers, is to either be reading or praying. You may get much instruction from books, which afterwards you may use as a true weapon in your uh, Lord and Master's service. So reading is very important. Exhortation and doctrine. I'm going to give you these verses, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. That means be ready at any time. You should be so well studied that any time that you can give a testimony. You're going to go places if you have not already been, and people are going to ask you questions, and you need to be able to answer those questions. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. In Titus chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible said, Holding fast the faith the word as he has been taught, teaching, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Sound doctrine. He needs to know sound doctrine. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. In Hebrews chapter 3, and verse 13, But exhort one another daily while it's called today, Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Hey, let me, let me share something with you that has helped me during this time of, of absolute chaos in, in our country. I, I told my dear wife this morning, I'd, I'd already put on a full day of work by 9 o'clock in the morning. And I told my wife, in such chaos, the only thing that keeps me grounded is my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God and the stability of my marriage. I mean, that, that, that keeps me grounded. So when you, when you say, well, I don't read the Bible the way I should, well, you, you're going to be really frustrated if you don't stop listening to propaganda and you get in the right book. You've got to get in the Word of God and study. And then you need to be in church. See, how much time did Jesus, now, now hear me out, I, I know there's different people who don't, don't, don't come for different reasons, and, and I'm not castigating any, anyone, not throwing it in their teeth, but people that want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, how much time did Jesus Christ spend with them? Any? How, how, how much time did he spend discipling people that didn't want anything to do with him? Harold Seitler said it this way. He said, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. You know, Harold Seitler, South Carolina preacher, old raspy Baptist preacher from South Carolina. He said, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. I'm not running around with a baby bottle and a bib and trying to find out where you are. See, the Bible is very clear. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let me tell you something. We're not in Bible prophecy. We're not there. And if we are attacked by a foreign country, I, I told somebody the other day, I was talking to a preacher, he said, you don't think we could repel? I said, we might repel an attack, but we're not going to make somebody a parking lot, not when, they're, not when they are the ones listed in Old Testament and New Testament prophecy. You, you need to understand, China ain't going nowhere, pal. And, and so when we look at what's going on and realize, man, the rapture could happen at any time, you and I, not only do we need to be an example of the believers, uh, I mean, a witch doctor listened to the gospel because she saw the interaction of people in the church and how they love one another. Amen. One, one old preacher said this, 
Comfort, encouragement, admonition, admonition, and exhortation of the whole idea of ministry, which would today be described as counseling. But here the context favors the ministry of preaching and expounding the, 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 the scriptures. See, you and I need to understand that there are gifts. Gifts that was given to him, we see in verse 14, but the gift, uh, uh, look, look what it says, not, neglect not the gift that is in thee. I mean, this young man was given gifts by God, and so have you been. And not don't neglect them, use them, put them to use. The Bible says also in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Hey, listen. I find myself that when I go places, I talk to people, and then people inquire what I do, and I tell them. And then, then I look at it as an opportunity. I'm just going to try to encourage these people in the Lord. I find out if they're saved. And if they're saved, they have questions about this and questions about that and questions about this and questions about that. I mean, it, it is unbelievable. And I'm like, hey, look, you live up by Pastor Blair's church. Just go to the church of Pastor Blair. And so I try to encourage people and try to encourage them in, in a godly way. But you're not going to be able to do that if you don't know the book. You, you and I are not going to be able to encourage people when we're so defeated by circumstances that we get our eyes off of Jesus Christ. This is not a time to be defeated by circumstances. It is a time to step up and live what you say you believe and live with zeal, with spirit, with faith, and in purity. That you are going to live a pure, right life. Because let me tell you something. With all the things I understand that America is not in Bible prophecy, and understand that, that, that America is not promised, that we're not going to go through a lot, of, a lot of hard times. And what you and I may face in the next four to five years may be untold misery. We have no idea. You know what it boils down to? Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And so in other words, you better be right today because it may be real ugly tomorrow. And you know what? <coughs> Excuse me. You can get right with God at any time, but it's a lot better just to walk with the Lord and be right with the Lord through all times, right? You can be an example. And right now, if there's any time in American, in, in our lives, in, in, in the 1900s and 2000s, I know there's a lot of difficult times that this nation's faced, but we have never faced what we're facing today. You do not have time to waste. You do not have time not to study. And you do not have time not to be a biblical, proper example. Every head bowed, every eye closed.